Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Now we are going to explore how to use word compellingly. When you write, have you ever asked yourself the question, am I trying too hard to impress my readers? How will you impress your readers? William Blake, in his poem, The Audrey's of Innocence wrote, to see the world in a grain of sand and the heaven in a wild flower. This English poet, rather like the Chinese Zen poets, informed us we can know something, even something about the world and the heaven by studying what is in front of our noses. The world and the heaven are general nouns. A grain of sand and the wild flowers are spe specific words. Flower can become a general noun, and to be more specific, we can say geranium or rose. They are specific nouns. Learning how to use general and specific words can make our writing more vivid and interesting, or at least less confusing. Learning objectives are 1. To be able to distinguish abstract and concrete words, general and specific words. 2. To be able to use the general words or specific words alternatively. Task. Revise the first draft. 1. First draft. Let's begin our new life to cherish every day. In the revised version, the author used a lot of concrete verbs, hop into, live to the fullest, savor, digest, rather than the general word, cherish. These are the types of details that writers should strive to show. The revised one is more interesting because it includes more concrete specific details. Now it is your turn. In each of the following sentence pairs, notice how the italicized words in the first sentence provide little information, whereas those in the revised sentence provide interesting details. 2. First draft. On Black Friday, people rush to the counters. Revised version. On Black Friday, people elbow and show their way to the counters. In the second draft, we use strong verbs to spice up our writing. In order to write compellingly, we should use more specific and concrete words instead of general and abstract words in most cases. Now let's distinguish concrete words and abstract words. Concrete comes originally from the Latin concreto. Concresco to grow, con means together, usually referring to a physical process like concrete hardening. Often concrete terms are words or details that appeal to one or more of the five senses, or words identifying persons and things that can be perceived by the senses or understood by the mind, seen, heard, tasted, felt, smelled, remembered. For example, table, boy, rose, chair, book, teacher, honking, hamlet, or the box rebelling. Here are different types of concrete noun. Concrete nouns can be common nouns man, dog, proper nouns, Simon, bonzo, compo nouns, bear, country, non compo nouns, music, tennis, collective nouns, crowds, group. Abstract. Abstract comes from the Latin word abcheho. Cheho means to draw off. Ab means from. It often means to strip away material details to leave only the bare essence of the item under consideration. 
they tend to be words that do not refer to material objects or suggest a direct engagement with any of the five senses. Courage, truth, justice, honor, and education are a few abstract terms. Beware that clarifying a noun as concrete or abstract may depend on context or even the classifier's definition of perceivable. Some nouns will be abstract in one meaning but concrete in another. For example, you may be able to fool the waters but not the atmosphere. One atmosphere refers to the envelope of gases surrounding the earth is concrete. Moscow had an intense atmosphere of darkness and secrecy. One atmosphere refers to pervading mood of a place is abstract. The most general terms refers to classes or groups. These terms are very broad. For example, flower and dog are general terms. The most specific terms stand for definite, precise things. Specific words convey much more information than general words. Most words are neither wholly general nor specific. They exist between the two extremes. A useful exercise in learning to be specific is to see the words we use for people, place, things, and ideas as being positioned somewhere on a ladder of abstraction. The following examples show how you might move from general to specific word choice. Very general, less general, more specific, quite specific, college student, freshman, boy in math class, Bill Jones, organism, plant, flower, irishes. Words that are concrete rather than abstract are more powerful in certain types of writing, specifically academic works and works of non-fiction. However, abstract words can be powerful tools when creating poetry, fiction, or persuasive rhetoric. They are often used in philosophical and other academic writing. Abstract terms are useful for we must often write about ideas and the concepts. Now, we need terms that represent those concepts. Abstract terms are useful and even necessary when we want to name ideas, as we do in thesis statements and some paragraph topic sentences. But they are not likely to make points clear or interesting without specific details which clarify them. Choose specific verbs. In reporting what you have gathered from reading, you will need to use a variety of verbs that suit your purpose, rather than using the words say, show, or report all the time. You may use more specific verbs in academic writing as illustrated below. Other useful words for reporting what you have gathered in your secondary research are assert, claim, argue, infer, reason, postulate, and illustrate. Avoid using unsophisticated adjectives such as good, bad, bit, little. Abstract and general words enable us to express ideas. Specific and concrete words enable us to define entities. Both types of words are indispensable, and an accomplished writer can use the two kinds of dictions alternatively. See you in the next lecture.